What's going on, people? Welcome back to Chelsea Fan TV. Welcome back to a live review. I guess this is what we're going to call it because I'm not at the ground for once. But yeah, big up everyone that's locked in. Salzburg 1, Chelsea 2. We are through to the Champions League knockout rounds. Depending on the AC Milan result, we'll decide whether we're through as group winners or not. But it should basically be done unless AC Milan lose their match tonight, which fares even better for us because it means that we can rotate. It means that we have a free game, which could be invaluable with the games coming up as well. But let's get into the game. 2-1, Kovacic and Havertz with the goals for us. We're going to delve into everything in this review. Big up everybody that's locked in. Hit the like button. Smash the subscribe button if you guys haven't done so already. It helps the channel out massively. And if you want to be the first to know whenever we release any new content, hit that bell notification button as well. Guys, every little button that you press matters a lot. So hit that. Check out my personal channel as well, Carefree Lewis G, in the description below. And let's get into it. Um, this, to be honest, was probably one of our best performances this season. I think we were in control for long periods. It took us a while to see the game out. Us not killing it off in the first half when we had the chance. It nearly came back to bite us. But, hey, a moment of magic from Kai Havertz, of all people. Someone who you guys already know I've been on his neck for the last six months or so. But I'll credit a good performance when I've seen it. Second half, I thought he was unbelievable. A moment of magic with the goal. I thought he did well with the little... Sp even in tight spaces, I thought he was doing well to take the ball out. Find other passes. Kind of robbed of a few assists too, if we're being real about it. Like, Abamayang, some of the shots he took were good goalkeeping. There were some others though where it's like, Abamayang, you should be burying it. And I kept saying, as long as Oba is taking his chances, I don't really have an issue with what he does in game. This game, he should have been burying his chances. And we're lucky that it didn't come back to haunt us. But... It wasn't the best of games from him and we need to see a lot better because this was an open game. This is a game where we had space to manoeuvre. This is a game where we had um, a lot of space and time on the ball as well, especially with some of the passes that he was receiving. Like we had a good breakaway in the first half. Havertz found the Bamiyang in acres of space. And the finish just wasn't good enough. It wasn't good enough. And for a veteran, a striker of his quality needs to be doing a bit better but overall I thought the performance was good I thought um my man of the match personally I was not too surprised Jorginho won it because I thought he did his job really well but I thought it would have gone to one of Chalaber or Gallagher the pair of them stood out to me Chalaber yet again invincible unbeaten um as a Chelsea first team player still unbeaten brilliant performance I thought didn't put a foot wrong I thought um, brilliant blocks and tackles, especially in the second half when we were having a lot more pressure to deal with. And he only continues to improve and to look even more composed in game. And the consistency that he's showing right now, if he can continue this it potentially into the World Cup, because if I was Gareth Southgate, I'd be calling him up right now. But if he continues to show this form after the World Cup, we need to have a conversation of him being one of the best centre-backs in the league. I'm not speaking it right now, because even though he's played consistently, you need a time frame. You need to do it for a certain level before um, I think you can have that sort of conversation. But if he, if he continues this form, there is no reason to put him up there. Because positionally, he looks so much more aware than he was last season. When back then, he'd have a little bit of a lapse of concentration every now and then. He's not having that anymore. And quietly, I said this in the last game, I'm going to say it again today. I thought he was better than Silva. Silva, I think, really struggled a bit today. And it was all earmarked with the goal too. Like I don't blame Thiago Silva outright for it. But he went in very early for that challenge. He lost it and then we were caught in transition. It was too quick for him to come back. We were down a man and Cucurella had two people to deal with on the far post. And he just couldn't do it. It was unlucky, it was unlucky, and we're obviously not gunning for Thiago Silva or anything like that. That would never be the energy that I have for him with the level of consistency that this guy's shown. But it wasn't a good game from him, in my opinion, in my opinion. But I will just say that quietly, and I know that's not the level that Thiago Silva shows as well. So it is what it is. But 
Other than him, I thought Gallagher and Kovacic, they provided a lot of energy um, in that midfield. Brilliant performances from the pair of them. And Kovacic's goal, by the way, unbelievable. It's like this guy only scores bangers. His goal comp is looking like Olivier Giroud's, if he just gets a little bit more. But same way, brilliant performance from him. Um, going forwards, let's talk about the wing backs. Sterling, I thought was a little bit quiet, but I didn't think he played poorly. Um, I thought he did well with build-up play and everything like that, but he didn't stand out. He didn't have any big individual moments from me. I think Pulisic, on the other side, though, looked a lot more dangerous. He was driving at players. He was asking questions of them again. And the assist as well for Habits for the second. Like, we are not going to overlook Pulisic's play. And I thought he was very good. Very good. And with that performance, he's got to bring that into the next game. There's, there's no way... No way we could be looking at that performance and not starting Pulisic in the next match. I thought it was a brilliant performance from him. Um, Havertz, we haven't spoken about it too much because, like, let's be real. This game's only going to be spoken about for that banger in the second half from him. But I thought first half, he was good in phases. Also, very poor in phases as well. The second half, completely different. I thought he looked a lot more confident. Um, he wasn't losing possession as much. Starting to look a little bit stronger on the ball as well. And the cherry on the icing of the cake was that banger for the second goal as well. Brilliant finish from him. And we needed it. We absolutely needed it. Because in those sorts of situations, I don't really know where our goal is going to come from. We need those moments of magic. This is the sort of thing... Well, I won't, I won't say that. The moments, moments like that are what you want for a player of that price tag. But it's the consistency as well. This is why, like, as soon as he scored, I had so many habit stands in my mentions. And all I'm saying is, like, it was great, but please show this consistency. If you can show me this level or even a higher level for the next five to six games or something along the lines of that, then I think you would have a lot less criticism. I'd be praising you more, too, by the way. But we need to see this level of consistency a lot more because we just haven't seen it enough. But brilliant second half performance from me. Didn't think it was uh, it was a man of the match worthy performance. I think that would have still gone to either Gallagher or Chalaba. Jorginho ends up winning it. I'm not going to say too much about it, except my guy stays winning. But we move. It is what it is. We are through to the round of 16. Whether we will be through as group winners is all dependent on our next performance. Uh, um, Not our next performance. I'm waffling. AC Milan. Uh, and their performance against Zagreb. A win or a draw, and we're through as group winners. And that means we can rotate. That means we can play a completely fresh 11. And it means we can rest players with the month, with the week from hell coming up next. Arsenal at home. New um, City away. Newcastle away before the World Cup. Having that extra day's worth of rest is going to be invaluable. But let me know you guys' thoughts down in the comment section below. Don't forget to like and subscribe. We will be back tomorrow with five things. And yeah, up the Chelsea.